activity this year since so we did one in january in london which is actually quite successful but since then um we've really been out of it for obvious reasons so um we're trying to pick things up here i think i heard someone speak go ahead ah it looks like jimmy's fixed the streaming okay my heartfelt thanks to jimmy um so who would like to introduce themselves next again it's optional you don't have to you can just uh, you can just you know just watch Sean's probably a brand name person, but it might be good for an introduction. You know, to keep things going, I can introduce myself. Um, yeah, I'm actually not an operator, uh, but you know, involved in the OpenStack community <clears throat> for a long time and care about hearing about experiences with actually running OpenStack. So um, that's been my involvement here and in helping where whatever I can with get the getting the ops meetups um, going and and just listening in and and doing what I can. Uh, anyone else care to introduce themselves or you know give us some idea what they're looking to get from this session? Nobody wants to. Okay. Everyone's too, too shy or too tired. <laughs> Maybe a bit of both. That's fine. Um, so I shared in the chat here the Etherpad. The way these sessions work is this is not a presentation. It's a round table. Um, we're supposed to you know, all pitch in and talk. And we're also attempting to catch notes about um, the conversation um, in the Etherpad. So if those of you who don't know, it's like a, a, a lightweight shared documentation platform. So if you click on the link in the chat, um, you'll see um, multicolored text and it's actually growing. People are plus wanting their OpenStack uh, version. So that's always a fun way to get going. Um, one of the things we've done is highlight to the OpenStack developers that um, there are a number of installations with um, fairly elderly OpenStack. And so, um, you know, it's a problem when they act or occasionally if they assume that um, everyone's running the latest um, in particular, um, there was a time when they would delete the documentation very aggressively, like you know, the stuff would be supported for a year and then the docs would, would basically, you know, fall off the edge of the face of the earth quite quickly. And that was a problem because the docs for the version that, for instance, we were running got deleted and the, um, the ops meetups team actually conveyed the information to the developers that that was actually a problem and got that fixed. So um, what I'd like to ask people to do is to actually start participating. And the easiest way is, um, and this presumably no one's too shy to do this, go onto the um, Etherpad, add your name in participants at the bottom, and then um, plus one every version of OpenStack that um, you're, you're running in production. Um, now, we might have test instances and something on your laptop and you know um, those kinds of things. But something that's actually running uh, end user VMs would be um, counted as production. It doesn't have to, you know, be uh, kind of a commercial thing. Um, you know, if you're a um, supporting scientist, then they're your users, right? So, um, so for me, I'm going to plus one it, but I'll also talk talk through. Um, so, uh, we are building and growing our rocky clusters, but um, we also are still on Nataka on older ones. So I plus one. Both of those because um, Mataka is still a supported platform in, at Bloomberg. Um, and the nice thing about that is that, that was actually the first version of OpenStack for which they stopped deleting the documents. So to this day, you can go into docs.openstack.org, select the version selector to Mataka, and find the docs. So um, it is important to collect the information from real operators because. In some sense, the developers are a more coherent community. Um, you know, they get together, they do the code. It's often their full-time job to develop the OpenStack code. Um, I work at a company where I run uh, a product based on OpenStack, but uh, you know, I don't, um, I don't cut really, you know, OpenStack release branches. I don't take decisions to delete things. But then I find that the stuff we're using is, you know, considered obsolete. Then um, that's a problem. So we try and uh, balance that. Um, you know, open, OpenStack developer um, focus, I guess, with um, information from the operators that, you know, 
what the, what our needs are um, and how things can get better. So it's actually, you know, um, all, all around making OpenStack better for all of us. Um, so this is interesting. We've got somebody who said that they run Kilo. <laughs> um, we did run Kilo um, and we actually um, upgraded to Liberty and Metallica on those set, very same clusters on the same hardware. So we do have experience going that far back. Uh, I don't think we have, well, I, I'm certain that we don't have any Havana and Ice House, but uh, you know, if someone is running something older than Havana, they can, they're welcome to extend the Ethernet. Again, this is, this is not a presentation. This is, um, I am trying to, you know, basically uh, kick off a discussion here where, um, you know, we all share information. Now, um, actually I see Shintaro, Shintaro is joined as well. Hey Shintaro, um, how are you? Long time no see. Good to see you again. We Good just agreed. Uh, Sean and I just introduced ourselves, um, and I invited other people to introduce themselves if they wanted to, but I think people were either still waking up or shy or something. But Shintaro is another member of the Ops Meetups team who's actually um, hosted an event in, in Tokyo um, via his employee, employer. Um, so I asked everyone to get started with the version summary. Hey, there he is. Hi. And, um, you know, also put their participant name uh, at the bottom. So we're getting a good uptake. And actually, um, it does look like the community, well, this, this is a sample of the community is making progress because we're, we're heavily at Queens. But that's, you know, these days still quite a long way back. Um, they just announced uh, Victoria, I think it is. I may even have the name wrong. Um, we are hoping to get developed, developing uh, our product based on Usuri very soon. And look at that. Now Queens and Train are um, vying for the lead. Um, so this is this is a fun thing because you know you can plus one something even if you're not sure how this works and not feeling like speaking or being on video. Um, but it's actually really interesting because um, without um, without this information coming to the developers on a regular basis, they can get the idea that we're all you know very up to date. Um, in our case, it's not it's not possible to do uh, updates at the rate that they come out from OpenStack, so we have to pick and choose. Um, you know, so then we're faced with um, some of the issues that I tried to uh, sketch out later on, like um, uh, upgrades and things. So keep on putting your plus ones there. Um, did anyone want to do an introduction? I, I kind of stopped asking, but um, if anyone wants to share who they are and what their um, use of OpenStack is, or um, you know, anything about scale or those kinds of things, speak up. We do have we have a pretty decent time slot. Uh, Okay, I'm, uh, um, I can talk about that. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm from Lime, and we're the nominee of uh, Super Earth this year. So there's a short in introduction in the keynotes. And our scale is about uh, more than 2,000 hypervisors. And we're currently running Mitaka version with a lot of customization to fit in house components. So that's kind of the reason that we're stuck in Mitaka because. Um, it's hard to upgrade since we have too many customizations. Yeah, that's a very good point. Thank you. Thanks, Gene. Thanks for sharing. Yeah, congratulations on super user um, nomination. Um, that's great. Um, I saw something about the scale. It's pretty phenomenal. There's this, you know, these these sites that are not even that well known that just turn out to have all of this infrastructure running on OpenStack. It's always exciting. Um, I think I'd heard of Line before, but I didn't understand the scale. So. You guys are clearly doing something right. Um, so you said Metaka, that's great. Um, we're still running Metaka um, on, um, I think, nine open site clusters in, in uh, three three geographic regions. Um, so I think that, that gets um, probably um, very nicely to the next point that I put in. And by the way, even the points on the document are just my idea of what we can talk about. You, you can feel free to throw in whole new topics. Um, but the upgrade pain points, um, so I threw a few things in that are very commonly discussed. Um, one is the cadence. Um, OpenStack does two releases per year and they're all full releases. What I mean is they're all each as good as the other. There aren't any ones that are um, prominent as being long-term support. That's not a concept for OpenStack. So you're expected in some sense to actually visit every release in the software. In particular, you have to at least do the database migrations through every version. Um, but I, I've kind of had some discussions 
where I think that um, two a year is not necessarily the right pattern these days. Um, so, um, you know, I, I wonder whether anyone else feels that um, the number of releases is maybe too high. And it, the interesting thing is when we talk to the developers and say two a year, why are you doing that? You know, there's 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 much fewer Linux kernel releases, for instance, and other things. They they say, well, two a year, that's we want many more. We want to release all the time. Um, so there is a bit of a disconnect there. But anyway, I, I threw that in. Um, you know, it hasn't budged so far. Um, but interestingly, it used to be two releases a year and two summits. And I think it's moving towards, um, well, who knows in the, in the time of the pandemic, but um, I think they are moving towards um, one full summit and one developer focused event. Um, and to me, that kind of indicated a slight change in, in the emphasis away from like, you know, this, this fast paced, uh, to a year. Um, so whether or not you actually switch on your, um, your intermediate OpenStack releases, um, you do have to upgrade through all of them. And, um, that's something that, um, people have asked for fast forward upgrade. Um, they used to call it skip level, but basically it's been clarified that you can't just upgrade from, you know, A to C, for instance, you always have to go via B, but it can be, okay, John, the tuba guy, folks do want features faster than twice a year. That's a very good point. There are people who are gasping for um, uh, features faster. So John, you're welcome to speak. I don't know, uh, is it possible I'm missing something that some people can't speak in this? Are you joining via streaming rather than actually in the Zoom meeting? Like only Sean and I and Gene have talked, but uh, um, maybe John just prefers to type. So um, it's a very good point that um, whilst we fight, we struggle to do that many upgrades because we're you know financial data company and um, we have to do a lot of um, verification testing. We have to have you know stability. Other people are um, really keen to get the latest features as soon as they emerge from you know KVM Linux um, you know storage. Um, John has not joined Zoom. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, normally, John's not afraid to speak up. Um, John Garbutt. Um, we have a question. So, are upgrades still a pain point um, from Sylvan? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. He'd love to hear examples. So, you know, as a, again, this is not a presentation. I'm not. A, <laughs> I'm not even a good present presenter. So, why don't someone? Why doesn't someone speak up if they have a problem with upgrades? Why don't you share a bit? Um, you can speak and we'll try and, you know, tap something into the etherpad. Yeah, I mean, um, may, 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 I mean may, maybe my question is rough and sorry about that, but um, to, to be honest, you know, we, we know about the cadence and we know it can be difficult for, for operators to upgrade, but that's also why we, we try to make the upgrades smoother. Um, so, so basically, um, I, I think upgrades are no longer a pain issue, but if you if you still have problems, actually, please, please tell me, because um, as far as I know, DB migrations, um, RPC, RPC upgrades, or that, that kind of stuff, at least for, for, for at least for the main services, for, for me, it's no longer a pain. I think that's very valid. Um, so I think that um, part of the upgrade thing is fear and uh, uncertainty. It used to be extremely scary, and um, you know the tested paths were just the most mainstream ones. And then if you were, if you made any different implementation choices, you would upgrade, and you'd find stuff didn't work, and you had to, you know, kind of pull apart the database by hand and fix stuff up. And you know those days are long past. So I'm going to type in. Please provide specific recent examples. I guess it's fair for the developers to say, you know, bugs. Tell us. Um, in our case. I, I think it's very fair to say that uh, in Havana Ice House, it was um, a terrifying experience upgrading in Mataka. Well, from Kilo to Liberty to Mataka, which we successfully did, it got better. Um, and in those days, we were on Nova Network, which was actually being deprecated at the time. Um, we have not upgraded in the more modern era. We're on Rocky, um, so I can't share personal experience. But um, I think this is a this is a place where, for instance, the um, the upgrade checks. Have helped, um, and I think they've also cleared out the um, expectation that all the services will be brought online at each release version. So if you're going from A to C, 
you do start the services at B. In other words, the database is migrated once services are started. I think they've got rid of the idea that those services get to do housekeeping for release B. So, or at least they're trying to. Um, so the idea is that if you need to upgrade a long way, like A, B, C, D, you just do A to B, B to C, C to D, and it you know should work. So I I I, I do accept that it's got a lot better, but um, there's are, there are other reasons why it's hard that aren't um, entirely in the hands of the core OpenStack developers. Um, for instance, and there's a good point here, third-party plugins. Um, so we um, we actually see this ourselves because the way that we do Neutron is the Calico um, plugin. It's a core plugin, um, but um, you know it's um, it's a cool piece of software. But it's mostly their main market is uh, Kubernetes now. So their support matrix for OpenStack is you know we tell them where we're going to go, like we're going to go to Azure, and they're like. Oh, I guess we better do that then. Like they're not really on board with the full OpenStack program, and I, I imagine that um, other people are um, also running plugins that aren't necessarily being upgraded twice a year strictly and being in OpenStack CI/CD. Perhaps someone could some, could share some examples. I'm going to put in my example now. Um, I don't wish to badmouth uh, the vendor Tigera, but um, you know we're a small part of their uh, customer base. The OpenStack with Calico has been a become a niche. What other third party plugins are people using that um, maybe hamper their uh, um, ability to upgrade, even if the core OpenStack um, components all upgrade very nicely? OK, so we had some contact. Uh, some content there. Thank you. Contrail plus Metaka plus CentOS. Um, Contrail is not something I have personally touched, but we did look at that. I'm familiar with that. Isn't it? Hasn't it been renamed now? Isn't it? Um, isn't it called something like um, Platinum or something? Or hi, um, I'm Jan from Workday. I was typing that in. Um, it, there's a um, there's an open source. Um, project that's been spun off from open control called tungsten fabric tungsten, um, right. yeah that that's ostensibly the upstream source uh, but to get the uh, vendor supported version you you still need to buy the uh, uh, product which is called control at this point um, and we're using the kernel version uh, plus um, uh, it's also a core neutron plugin so there's a there's definitely a a very interesting upgrade problem that you get when the hypervisors are st are still on CentOS seven, um, and um, there's a kernel dependency, and there is also a um, version or the, the the OpenStack plugin dependency. So it's it's very difficult. No, and 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 again, so. We get the same thing where we have to wait for the OpenStack release to be available before we ask the vendor to provide the plugin for us. Yeah, it's all very familiar. Um, by the time OpenStack releases become available, and then we tell our vendor we'd like to try that one, and then they get it, and then they start work on it. There's there's probably another OpenStack release already. Um, there's, there's no reason for, for um, um, the, the the CI infrastructure in OpenStack for third-party CI is mature enough. Uh, it's just uh, um, not everybody is is willing to devote the resources to keep up with uh, uh, with CI. That's a, that's a very very good point. So our vendor actually uh, pulled their software out of OpenStack CI because they they described it as annoying, like they didn't do anything, and then their code broke, quote unquote, broke all the time. So. They went, they went off and put it on GitHub or something like that. But uh, we, we are very disappointed with this because um, the reason it broke is because you know they're consuming software that's changing. <laughs> so if they don't maintain their software, then they have basically a reintegration task every time we ask them to do a release. So, um, and, and specifically, it's, it's, it's difficult to, uh, uh, to rationalize uh, um, keeping it uh, in the OpenStack infrastructure when you're only targeting a particular OS, for example. For example, um, 
uh, it's it's a vendor has to duplicate their efforts in to certify it for um, Ubuntu and for CentOS and for RHEL and whatever. Yeah, very true. Um, well, well, I mean, I mean, if I may say certification, I'm I'm, I'm not really sure that certification should be done on stream, right? I mean, if we, are, if, we, if we are already talking about, I mean, th there are two different things that I, I don't want to mix. Um, first, first, first is, okay, do we like support this specific driver, this specific plugin? Then for that, we have start party CI, okay? But if you want to, if you want to make sure that we can certify a specific release with a vertical, uh, I would say with a vertical, uh, hardware like, for example, using um, using some specific OpenStack release or specific OpenStack distribution with some specific OS with specific hardware. Is it really something that upstream should be uh, should be certifying? I, I'm not really sure about that. No, uh, I Sylvan, your your um, so I'm sorry to butt in, but your your microphone is very very noisy. It's actually a little hard. I don't know if you have some paper or something on it, but uh, it was just a little unclear. But I think very good points there. I think there's a huge tension between, you know, the breadth of OpenStack and the needs of some people who, are, you know, have code in CI, CD and are expected to suddenly support it on more platforms um, that maybe they don't have, actually have any traction on. I don't have the answer. So what I would suggest is please try and capture some, you know, summary of these issues on the etherpads, because I will tell you that these etherpads are gold when we go to future sessions. I mean, the way, the way I write these now is I just go and read the old ones because there's so much material there. Um, and we just try and bring, you know, the, the issues that really get the most engagement forward to future events. Um, anyway, sorry to, sorry to butt in, carry on. And by the way, someone who put their hand up, I think you're going to have to just try and butt in and just speak up. I apologize for this format, but it's, it's all we can do in this, in this, you know, current times. Science. Okay, I see a lot of um, a lot of um, go, uh, activity on the etherpad, but I'm sure I cut someone off. So, was it Jan? Why don't you carry on? I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, so sorry. I was I was just um, uh, I think Sylvain um, made a um, a good point where this certification and the CI. Um, uh, so it's 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 probably a good idea to 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 separate them. I'm I'm not sure if 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 I get his point, but uh, if if I'm I'm paraphrasing him correctly, but uh, to be inside CI is is a very different thing from 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 certifying that your solution has been fully integrated in in a particular platform. Um, to be inside CI means that you're uh, participating in integration uh, with the the leading edge of everything that open or the, the uh, everything that that OpenStack supports um, to be certified for a specific uh, uh, solution means that you have decided to focus on a particular um, uh, a particular release and a particular thing that you were willing to support um, however it's very difficult to certify to, to to keep up the certification pace if you don't also keep up the CI pace and, and and you're totally right, Jan. I'm I'm not I'm not saying we should stop third party CI. I, I just want to make sure that uh, I, I just want to make sure that we continue to say upstream services have like support for specific drivers or I mean I don't know what to say, but yeah, basically third party CI indeed. Uh, I, I'm only working in Nova, so I, I only know from Nova. But Cinder, Cinder, and Cinder and, and Neutron are, are different. I know about that. But yeah, and and to be honest, it's 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 really difficult, right? It's really difficult to say, okay, we want we won't continue to support a specific driver because we because we no longer we because we no longer support CCI, but we try to do it, and and you know, um, 
I, I definitely agree with you. It's it's something that I mean, if you are hardware, if you are an hardware vendor and you really want to support OpenStack, then please, please, please provide a third-party third CI for us. I mean, not not all the changes. I mean, we, we could discuss about the CI and which number uh, which number of changes or the way that we could look at the CI, but in general, it's 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 not it's not possible to support, to be honest, a specific vendor if we don't have third-party CI. Just just because, as you said, if if we modify something and then the driver no longer supports the the hardware, then we'll we'll only see it by the next release, and that's definitely too late. I agree with the the, the, the points you make. Um, I think there's a there's a, an unspoken thing that um, the resources supporting OpenStack are you know no longer so plentiful because there's less kind of venture capital bubble associated with OpenStack. And I, I think one of the things that possibly these conversations where people are really running it and pay vendors can do is to maybe realign the efforts of everybody in some way. And I don't have the answer. To, to make it more, um, how can I put it, sensible? I, I think the days when I joined OpenStack, they thought they could they could do everything on every platform for everybody. Um, but I think a lot of the uh, the froth has gone. Um, so maybe we can work out ways to uh, be more focused. Um, anyway, um, one thing uh, I, I'm seeing now is, um, in addition to the problem with the 30 party, party plugins, uh, hypervisor reboots. This is something I'd love to get to because I want to actually share something. Um, so we recently did um, an entire fleet reboot on our um, OpenStack um, Rocky clusters, which is I think about 1500 hypervisors already. Um, and we were able to move every VM uh, on those things because those are production clusters in, in, a, in a, few, a few efforts, like maybe 10 maintenance events over, over three weeks or something. And the key thing that's changed for us, well, number one, we're all on shared storage. I don't know how you can live with OpenStack if you don't have shared storage. Number two, we turned on a feature that was default off that everyone needs to know about, which is um, auto-converge, which is a libvert and uh, KVM feature, I think. But Nova has a setting for it. And what it does is if your VM won't live migrate, it slows the vCPUs down until it does migrate. So all of a sudden I'm at the stage where I can evacuate a hypervisor by typing a command and coming back later. It just works. All the VMs just move off elsewhere. Right? Shut the machine down, get the RAM fixed, whatever it is, and um, bring it back up. So um, I'm going to type it in, don't worry, but um, you know, this this really blew the minds of our of my 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 line management. And I hope I don't seem like I'm boasting, I want to share um, because um, we moved more VMs in a shorter time than the ESX platform had ever done in its entire tenure life at Bloomberg. So um, if you don't have live migration with uh, auto converge, um, you've got to try it. Um, anyway. Can I ask um, any questions about that? Just because I'm curious what, please do. what networking speed you've got. Dual 25 or dual 40 to each hypervisor. Oh, I'm surprised it helps you. OK, that's, that's really interesting. So we had some VMs that were extremely Busy. hard to move. Um, like we're running some Humio instances that are basically doing um, log ingest and metric and um, actually handling the queries. And they are just they are just on fire hot. They're huge. I think they're 32 core or something and they just wouldn't move. And then auto converge just hits them with a soft hammer and they go, oh. and then they wake up. I, I was going to say that the alternative actually is that um, quite a few few times it comes about the live migration downtime. I put a link to it there. It defaults to basically half a second, 500 milliseconds. I think there seems to be folklore that if you set that to 2000 instead of five, 500, you get much better effects in a similar kind of way. We had VMs like, that resisted moving for hours. Yeah, but th this isn't, um, that specific config is, is a- That was a timeout. Well, it's, it's, a, it's a weird one. So what it means is, 
and I'm going into way too much detail about how live migrate works. Basically, there's a point where you've copied all the memory and you go back again to see how much memory there is to copy next time on your next iteration. And libvert has to make the call, can it do it inside that config setting value? So basically, can I pause you while I do the final copy and then move you and start you on your destination? So yeah, if you've got busy VMs that are constantly churning around, you, if you wait just that bit longer, very often it can um, help. Now there is a problem in older versions of uh, Nova, we were very, very slow at increasing that. So basically what happens is it does like a little step every time. So it tries 50, 50 milliseconds then it for a while, then it gets 100 milliseconds and then 200 milliseconds, if you see what I mean. So it only slowly steps up to that config value anyway. So for very large instances, it would take longer to set up to that config value. So it's kind of a triple whammy kind of thing. So it's worth trying that if your instances have a problem with auto converge, because some people don't like their instances going a bit slow for a while and prefer to be off for longer, if you see what I mean, because they just sort of yeah. see a blip. We're it it depends on the workload, that. but. Um, We're having that conversation. There are people who say, no, no, don't don't slow me down. Just, just um, you know, run this thing to take me offline and then bring me back whenever you like. But I think that they're, being tricked there, being kind of provoked into speaking up because now we move the entire fleet. We move, you know, 20,000 VMs or something. Um, and some people say, well, I went slow for a bit. It's like, yeah, we had to, we had to put a new kernel on every box. <laughs> yeah. Um, anyway, I, I, it's not about me. So um, one thing I will say, we have a spirited discussion on upgrades um, and we're we have 15 minutes left. It's not up to me to move the thing along I, I almost feel like we needed and more of these um i will say that the your ops meetups team is a little bit uh under the weather right now not me but the you know sean and eric have other things going on but um maybe we can get together again one of the things i wanted to float as an idea is we're thinking about having like off schedule like but brief like monthly one or two hour things and we're thinking calling it ops radio or OpenStack something you know radio show i don't know but um if people like that idea please respond on the twitter threads the ops meetup twitter account is the, by far the place where we get the most engagement so we're just focusing on that i'm not trying to say twitter is great twitter may be the worst thing ever but we don't get any response on the mailing list so please just respond to the threads on the twitter um so as a trying to be a dutiful moderator i'm going to try and move forward a bit so we've got a lot of good material about hypervisor reboots um I said, please look into autoconverge. Um, John, did you put the um, thing about that you just explained to us about the, the timeout value giving libvert the opportunity to? Yeah, okay. I'll put the link in there. Um, thank you so much. People who, who are sharing information, um, you know, human memory is terrible. Um, two hours after this meeting, we won't remember half of it, but this etherpad will, so please do so. Um, what do we want to do? We, we can just carry on talking about upgrades and say that this session became an upgrade session, or we can uh, try and get onto some of the other topics I did. There's quite a bit about scaling, so I feel like we should probably touch on that. We have 15 minutes left. I was going to say, there's lots uh, of people with plus ones on Rabbit. Yeah. <laughs> Not that that's new, but... Um, so we can, yeah, we can start with Rabbit. We used to get killed by Rabbit all the time, get woken up in the middle of the night. Um, recently, two things I think uh, saved us um, number one, a very recent version of Rabbit had some very important fixes. I don't have the details to hand, but I could dig them out if people want. Um, I'll try and put them on the etherpad before the end of the week. Second of all, we were mirroring the queues to every node, which means that as you add Rabbit nodes, you add the total amount of work, you increase the total amount of work being done by the Rabbit cluster. And we changed it to exactly two, I think it's called, which means every queue has to be, has to exist twice on the cluster. So if you have five rabbit queue members, each queue is only on a minority of the nodes and uh, rabbit hasn't um, blown up in, in weeks or months now. So um, that's a couple of thoughts there. If other people have, um, you know, ways that they made rabbit better, uh, please share. But, you know, I think every time I ever went to an OpenStack conference, there was a talk entitled how we configured rabbit wrong and, and blew up at scale or something like that. Um, I'm hoping that next time we will get together, which I'm looking forward to, um, that will actually be over. I don't know if it's just new options in Rabbit, bug fixes or what, but um, that is no longer killing us as much as it used to. Um, 
but I see lots of plus ones that people are still encountering it. So um, I will try and share what we've done with it, which is, you know, sp specific version upgrades were super valuable to us. And then adjusting how much replication of queues you're doing um, across the cl Rabbit cluster members was very important. <laughs> Someone's actually shared the link. The one I was thinking of how we use Rabbit MQ in wrong way at a scale. Yes. I found it. <laughs> But I mean, I saw one of those, um, uh, I think in, to in Tokyo at the summit where um, someone said that Rabbit blew up for them so many times they switched to zero and Q and then some homegrown service discovery stuff and that wasn't working too well either. And, um, some questions here about RPC worker numbers and timeouts. Um, so, I actually run a development team. I'm not currently a developer, um, but I will say that our stuff, our core OpenStack distro is actually on GitHub, chef-bcpc under the Bloomberg organization. You can see what we're doing in Rabbit by just going and reading our code. And if anyone ever had questions about it, they'd be welcome to reach out to me on my Gmail, which is at the bottom. Um, another question close to my heart, is anyone having problems scaling because of networking? Um, our old clusters are Nova network based and layer two based. They have a single broadcast domain for each network. And uh, we reach the limits. You know, there's like core switches or spine switches that um, have no more ports and cannot be expanded and just can't have any more network. And our new thing um, is all layer three and routed and BGP. And um, we've scaled it so quickly. Um, so, um, I was interested whether anyone else is still on layer two and hitting those kinds of limits. Uh, there is one single plus one there. If anyone wants to share what you know what they're seeing, um, another another point here. Um, uh, Q routers migration. Yeah, this is something I'm not familiar with. Is Q router an OVS thing? Someone help me. I think we can get a free agent. I beg pardon, I couldn't hear that. I think they're referring to the L3, L, L3 agent. Okay. Yeah, hello. hello. Yep, someone speaking, go ahead. Yeah, uh, actually it's uh, related to uh, L3 agent. Uh, we have an implementation that is based on uh, the switch and uh, the inconsistency uh, I'm talking about is uh, while migrating Q routers, we, we have at the beginning, uh, for example, we have three agents, uh, agent, neutron, uh, agent uh, A and B. We have normally uh, a Q router is uh, assigned to agent A and during the migration, we we assign uh, the Q router to agent B, uh, but at the same time we we found like the namespaces and uh, all the the resources of the Q router still exist in the neutron node uh, A. So uh, if we have a, a lot of Q routers to migrate, we, we really have some uh, inconsistency problems. We have some Q routers that still like uh, in the boat, uh, neutral nodes and uh, yes, yeah, so uh, maybe it's related to the time it takes actually to clean up all the resources from the agent A, uh, then create them to agent B, but we, we have this inconsistency. We, we, we don't know like if it's related to the time or, or what. Well, I'm sure that I speak for the developers present who, who you know, are looking for um, high quality bug reports on these kinds of things. It's not something I'm familiar with, so I really can't uh, comment. Um, so we have about seven minutes left according to my clock. Um, I don't have a time hard cut off, but I think that the session will probably end in, in terms of being broadcast and recorded and any of those things on time. Um, there's another um, op session coming up. Um, I think it's in 45 minutes or something. It's hard to it's hard to reason about times in other time zones. Um, I we put that down as um, 
war stories, which is always a fun one. People share about, you know, the, the day they broke their open stack cluster or, you know, powered off their data center, those kinds of things. But, um, you know, we could, we could probably do a little bit of follow-up on these topics um, at, that, at that session. Um, in particular, um, if anyone has feedback about whether we should try and get together ops types events online virtually, you know, away from the summits in the meanwhile, while we're probably mostly still all stuck at home, then I'd love to hear it. Um, we're willing to do it, I'm willing to do it, but uh, so far we've kind of flown the idea and we get like, you know, one plus one or one retweet and it's not clear that that would really indicate, you know, enough support for that. Anyway, let's, um, let's try and get through some more points while we still have, you know, this sort of public seminar going. Um, some great detail about the curators thing, which um, I don't follow. Um, I think the rabbit thing got subsumed in there. Let me uh, just, uh, if I can pop that out. Um, nobody's having problems scaling MySQL. Um, we managed to have it. Um, we got to a scale of over a thousand machines before we stopped MySQL using the you know, out of the box default buffer size and <laughs> uh, disk flush settings. Um, we were thrashing our SSDs to death and gating the performance of the entire cluster. So we make rookie errors all the time. Um, and then um, again, maybe not quite at the right level of indentation, but it doesn't really matter. There's actually some good um, material and questions here about telemetry. Um, Prometheus OpenStack exporter. Yes. Um, go ahead. Uh, so uh, yeah, I put the question down. Uh, we are looking into migrating to uh, Prometheus. So I was looking to see how people are, are running it. Uh, as most people are already know, Prometheus uh, doesn't do transactional. Uh, so how are you storing the data or are you expecting that uh, some, like you have a um, tolerance for, for missing out metrics? I can quickly say what we were doing. Um, we use Color Ansible and it has the ability just to start three Prometheuses, just all scraping your sources. And it pops them behind a load balancer. All right, it's so not you're a perfect you're solution, scraping, but you're scraping multiple times for each uh, metric. Um, effectively, like each server is just individually scraping all of the sources. All right. Um, it's not. By default, it actually low balances equally around all of the, um, <laughs> uh, what do you call it? Um, all of the servers, which isn't ideal if one of them goes down because you still get wiggly graphs. <laughs> it should really do the same thing you do with MariaDB and just focus on one. But anyway, it's a solution. I'm curious what other people do. Yeah, it was simpler than Thanos anyway. There's lots of good material in this um, etherpad. Um, I want to thank everyone. I'm not not saying we're done yet, but um, it was really unclear to me whether it would be me and Sean talking to to two people or, as it turns out, uh, 45 other people. So thanks everyone for turning up. Um, I wonder if can we get um, just a very specific question. Um, the old format of Ops Meetups was two days of you know, solid, like eight hours of work. Um, and I think everyone feels that uh, virtual events are more tiring in some sense. I'm not sure why, but um, a whole day of video conferencing is very, very kind of tedious in some sense. So we were thinking that um, more regular but shorter events might work better, but I really don't know. So um, Maybe if I can just put it on the etherpad right here where everyone's looking. So um, um, I think the, the contrast is. Um, Chris, can you copy the etherpad in the chat too? With yeah, I actually, it was in the chat, but it's just scrolled up, but I shall do that again um, mm -hmm. right now. OK, so. Um, So 
So what I'm doing is two two options. Um, and it's just above testing because you got a little bit into testing. Um, so it's if, if you're looking further up um, at uh, upgrades and stuff, if you could please just scroll down. So we have um, two options. I've called it future event poll. Um, Two-day event, like the old in-person meetups, or monthly short ops radio Zoom. Um, and I'm seeing a flood of plus ones. Thank you, guys. Um, you want, So someone else, <laughs> someone else is saying both. Um, so um, the event in January was very successful, but since then, I will say that the ops meetup team itself is, um, is, has a lot more challenges. Um, so someone said return to see the travel when travel returns. Yeah, I think when we can all get together in a in a great location and uh, not only work on these things, but then maybe have uh, have dinner together, I'm totally into that. I think we all expect to do that. The thing is, what to do when we're coping with the current situation, um, both the pandemic, politics, other things, um, and there's a tremendous, um, you know, uh, majority on this particular thing for uh, trying to do something more regularly but shorter on a Zoom or something. So this is very encouraging. I can I can throw this together. And it seems like, um, you know, this session went extraordinarily well. So it seems like there's a demand for it. Collar Club was created to get. Yes, Chris, um, if we go on like virtual ops meetups, then we need to consider about the, uh, the time differences. So the sh short, short version of the event is better to cope with the time differences. Yes, and also we could we could even adopt the um, alternating, um, you know, time slot. In other words, something good for North America, then something good for APAC. Right. Uh, yeah. I, I don't mind uh, early or late, with a little bit of notice. Um, it's obviously very easy at home. Mm -hmm. um, so someone's sharing something. Um, so because this is being recorded, I think it's being going to chop off now. So I want to thank everyone. Um, feedback via email is very welcome. My email is on the sheet. But the, the public place where you can show interest and support is the, uh, the Twitter account. Um, I think most of you will know it. But let me see if I can share it quickly. Um, by science, we discovered that we get more participation here than anywhere else. Um, so I'm going to I'm going to say that the meeting's done. From the point of view of broadcast, I'll hang around. We can continue updating the Etherpad. I, I do have to prepare for the next one, which is in 45 minutes. But thanks everyone for coming. I hope this was useful. And um, I guess we have a pretty good mandate to try and do something, uh, you know, uh, regularly but brief rather than the the two-day event. So fantastic. Let, I'll, I'll give it a go. Thanks everyone. Yeah. Thanks everyone. Thanks Chris for moderating all of this. Most welcome. Nice to see some of you, or at least hear from you. Um, John, thanks for joining. Um, Sylvan, uh, Ildico, I don't know some of you by name, so but thank you all. Um, the Etherpad's not going away, so you can just carry on um, typing in there. Uh, I don't think I get a signal. Uh, it still says live on custom live streaming service, so I don't know. Maybe I'm supposed to, to cut it off. <laughs> Does anyone know? Uh, I think you could probably just end meeting because you may do the host, I believe. So, okay, so that's good. Actually, I, I am the host. So I want to ask for final comments, questions, um, you know, requests, suggestions. Um, I, some, I know some people are just too polite to leave before the meeting ends, so I will end it. But uh, does anyone have any final thoughts? No? Okay, well, thank you, everyone, and I may see you in the next session. Thanks a lot. Bye. Thanks. Thank you.